it's finally here the december update is here for back for blood and we got christmas trees we got christmas lights i'm pretty sure there's a windmill over there that i never even noticed before because there's lights on it now there's bows everywhere stockings if you go ahead and you take a look out here we actually have some baubles that spit out confetti and presents there's weapon changes like this thing shoots a lot faster now there are so many new things there's new supply lines and oh my gosh i have to tell you so much about burn cards because they are absolutely game changing not only that there's a bunch of new cosmetics take a look santa hoffman's finally here <laughs> i'm so happy and not only is there all this new stuff going on here that i'm showing you they went ahead and reworked so many of the cards which are completely changing how you can play the game in fact <laughs> If you'd like to see what I'm talking about, I have a little clip here from yesterday's stream. So go ahead and take a peek at this bad boy because it was hilarious. I'm invincible. 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 No, I got grabbed. Where's Reddy? I'm invincible. Keep shooting! I'm invincible. So there's a ton of new stuff going on in this patch. It's all really exciting. And speaking of new things, allow me to tell you about our new sponsor, Keeps. Keeps is an online subscription service that helps men keep their hair. The cool part about Keeps is that they provide doctor-recommended, clinically proven treatments to combat the symptoms of hair loss. Not only that, it's delivered straight to your door, and most Keeps customers begin to experience notable results within six months of treatment. And speaking of treatment, the treatment plans are affordable, typically only costing about half that of what a pharmacy charges. And if you feel like you need any help picking out products, the Keeps physicians are available to help you look at your situation and then tailor a treatment plan just for you. And not only will they help you pick out a plan, the Keeps doctors are available for 24-7 support for an entire year after you start your Keep subscription. One of the things I can tell you about hair loss is the sooner you start treating it, the better results you're gonna get. So to get started with Keeps today and get 50% off your first order, you can go to keeps.com slash swingpoint or click the link in the description. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash swingpoint. Let's start with one of the biggest changes here, which is the new supply lines because this segues really well into the cosmetics. So there's new supply lines now and they're called the Roving Merchants. And what the Roving Merchants do is they keep refreshing over what you can see different periods of time so a day or two days or three days and when they refresh they just bring in new cards or new cosmetics what have you depending on what you still need to unlock if things disappear let's say you really wanted a good cosmetic out of the roving supply lines i wouldn't be too worried it probably is just going to get recycled in to a different line so don't worry about things being lost but things that you get inside of these include the new burn cards and burn cards are extremely powerful and very interesting and let me explain exactly how burn cards work so if i go into my decks here i have this collection of burn cards and each one of these burn cards has something that it does and you can go ahead and read through these but some of them help you gain copper there's one that lets you get an extra continue on your run there's some that grant copper per kill like hired gun over here which honestly hired gun is probably the strongest card in the game right now <laughs> not even exaggerating we have things that help you drop a new gun which is really helpful especially on levels where you get to upgrade to like a blue or a purple if you know which levels those are you can clear trauma etc etc there's lots of different effects here and if you take a look there's one two three four and then what about 14 total different burn cards as of today so allow me to show you how burn cards work because i know people are getting confused about how exactly they can be played when they can be played etc so I'm going to pick Walker here, and I'm just going to go through the same old thing. I'll pick my new Marathon deck that I've been running, which, by the way, if you want to see it, it's right here. I love this deck. You have the cards that you can pick available, right? One of which is a burn card. So I have five draws remaining, so I usually get these five draws anyway. So I can go ahead and just click Hellfire. I can click this. I can click that. I can click this and then that. But I forgot to select my burn card. Oh, no. That's okay. If I select B, I can go back to my burn cards. And now this is when you go ahead and choose to select a card. Now, what you'll see here is this times 13, times 5, times 8. Once I use it, it is gone forever. So if I use one of these, it is going to go down to times 4 forever. You do not get it back ever. It is burned away. 
And a really easy card to showcase this kind of effect on is something like Hired Gun here. So allow me to pick Hired Gun, even though it's a really nice card. So Hired Gun, I spent 80 supply points to get it. I'm using it right now on this level, farther afield, Act 3, during this continue. Okay? Okay. I, I really hope that part's understood. And so the way this Hired Gun card works, I go to my active cards, and what it'll say is whenever I get a kill, or whenever anybody on the team gets a kill, we're granted one copper, up to 500 copper for each hired gun card played. So the, what's really crazy about this card is every single player on the team can get 500 copper. And if every single player on the team plays hired gun, <laughs> every single player on the team can get 500 copper four times. So every single player on the team can get 2,000 copper, meaning you get 8,000 copper in one level with hired gun here. So if I go ahead and I take a look here, and I start shooting that stuff, what you'll see is my copper just went up in the bottom left-hand corner. I went from 3,000 to 3,001, 3,002. And actually, if I walk out here, what you'll see is you'll get the little notification in front of your face. Hey, man. I'm probably going to leave this here, so just warning you that I'm going to team kill these things because I'm testing stuff. I hope that's okay. Okay. <laughs> Glad I have your permission. <laughs> Thank you. Swing point? Yep, that's me. I'm testing things for a video. I'm recording right now. Would you like to say something? Subscribe. <laughs> yeah, let me soften you up. There you go ahead and team kill me and then take yourself out over there. Thank you. I appreciate you. So, we went ahead and failed here. <laughs> And what's going to happen is since Nightmare has changed to allow you to get a continue card, you'll see how that all changes with the burn cards, okay? So I get to go ahead and select another card here, but what you'll see is the burn card thing is gone. It disappeared. That's because you only get it once per level, not per continue, per level, okay? So even though I get to pick another deck card, like, I don't know, let's go ahead and pick this one. I do not get to use my burn card again. You get to use it once per level. So I will not get another chance to use a burn card until I reach the next part of Act 3. And to prove that to you, if I go ahead and I try killing stuff again here, I'm not getting that bonus copper in the bottom left anymore. I'm not getting those little trickles of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's all gone. Even though I'm still on this level, the continue is no longer in play. So it's wiped. It's gone. Now, if I would not have used my burn card during the first continue and then we wiped, my burn card would still be available, okay? Because I had not used it yet on this level. I hope that clears things up. So that's the burn card side of things. Now let's talk about the other part of the supply lines, which is all the new cosmetics, which is really exciting. So what you'll see in my supply lines right now is just a bunch of burn cards. But when you first load in, if you don't have everything unlocked right away, you'll see cosmetics trinkled in with this as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of those in case you're curious. You can tell if you have everything unlocked because you can just go into the character and then take a look at item set stuff. And each character has one thing that they got with the holiday update. So Evangelo here has Elf Angelo, which looks amazing. <laughs> and then Walker here has this big sweater, which I think is the same thing as the Ryan Reynolds Sick Kids campaign. It's a charity thing if you want to go check that out. We have Holly over here and Holly has the little reindeer thing on her head, which is so cute. And then we have Mom, which has... <laughs> An amazing Christmas sweater. I'm a big fan of it. <laughs> we have Doc here with a little Christmas beanie. We have Hoffman here with his Santa hat and beard. We have Jim with also another great Christmas sweater, which probably has some things written on it if you really zoom in close. And then we have Carly here, which is festive AF. And I'm pretty sure if you twist it around here, it says ho, ho, ho. <laughs> so each character has a thing. I wish they all had a full suit, but each, each character has a thing. Not only do we have that, we also have things in the armory. So if you go ahead and take a look at some of the weapons here, some of the weapons got some fancy schmancy things, including, let me see here, if I take a look at the shotguns, I know the shotguns have a few. So I take a look at the AA-12, and we have a fancy looking AA-12. We have ourselves a fancy looking Super 90. And then a lot of them got these Bengal upgrades, which are just golden versions of the guns, if you like your gold guns. Now, a question I know people are going to have is, how much did it cost to get all the cosmetics? I want all of them. How much do I need to invest in terms of time? I got all of the cosmetics while also buying burn cards because, again, they're mixed in with the burn cards. It took me about 4,000 supply points after I already had everything unlocked beforehand, such as the Total Apocalypse stuff. So if you have 4,000 saved up, you should pretty much have everything unlocked. But the main reason it costs that much is because you have to buy burn cards along the way. 
Another huge thing that they added is this whole ridden zone over here. By the way, one weird thing going on in the firing range is you do a ton of damage now if you hit headshots. Anyway, the new firing range here. So you can turn into a ridden. It's like if you're in swarm mode. This is the exact same swarm menu. So if you want to practice any of your tall boys or stingers or reekers for swarm, this is a great place to do it. Or if you just want to learn a little bit more about how they work in the campaign, you'll learn a couple of things here too. You can pick any of the nine variants and you can upgrade them with any of the upgrades that are available in the swarm mode. And if you're like, oh God, I got to spend 50 mutation points. How do I even get mutation points? If you go to practice options down here, you can go ahead and turn free upgrades on. You can also make it so the short ability cooldown. So you can just really practice all of the different abilities that they have. You can just go ahead and max out the mutation trees right away. If you just want to hustle through that and test out all the new things. And if you want to see what all these upgrades include, in case you've always wondered for Swarm, you can press a button here, toggle upgrade path, and you'll see what each one of these upgrade paths has for each one of these variants if you want to learn more about Swarm mode. And then, yeah, you can just pick whoever you want here. So if I go over to spawn, I could be a tall boy. And let me tell you, tall boys are crazy, especially in Swarm, because you can just do this, and then you can do this, and then you can do it again, and then you can do this again, and then you can do this again, and then you can do this again. This is why tall boys are so OP in Swarm. And then if you want to go ahead and change your ridden, maybe try out the stalkers. You can go ahead and do that. And then and then jump around. You can have cleaners in here with the ridden so you can play fun little things. Like yesterday on stream, we had Ren out here. And then there was me and Gifted. And we were both trying to see who would catch Ren first with a stalker. So we would jump around and do stuff like this to try to catch him. All sorts of fun things you could do in the ridden play area now. To briefly go into some of the quick changes that you definitely are going to be interested in. Include some of the weapons right away. So some of the weapons that got changed included the 870. So the 870 just shoots a lot faster now. Before it was like bam and then bam and then bam and then bam. And that was about the pace that you could shoot before if you're going full speed. Well now the 870 shoots much faster. So you go bam, 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 bam. It actually makes that sound every time you do it. The bam. That, that's that's not me doing. That's the video game. Another thing that changed is the M16. The M16 does more damage now. The M16 does about 14% more damage, just on my calculator, because it used to be 14 damage per tick, and now it's 16 damage per tick at the gray variant. What this means is that the M16 is going to scale better, because other weapons, like the AK-47 here, the AK-47 also did 14 damage as a gray variant, similar to the M16 in the old patch. But the AK-47 had a much higher scale. It would go, by the time it was purple, it would do way more damage per bullet than the M16 did. So, with this upgrade to the M16, it kind of evens the playing field a little bit. And one of the cool things about the M16 is as it upgrades to green, blue, purple, you move faster while firing. It is the fast person's AR. So, I think this might open up a lot of M16 gameplay if you are interested. Another thing that was changed is the MP5. Frankly, I don't know what was wrong with the MP5, but there was something wrong with it before where its fire rate wasn't doing what it was supposed to do. Either way, that's fixed now. They also said they changed some stuff with the Molotov, so I don't know what that means, but part of me feels like that means they fixed the whole thing where if you run into a Molotov, you take more damage. I'd be sad if they fixed that, but I wouldn't be surprised if they did either. <laughs> you may have caught in the patch notes that birds now have one HP where before they had 10. So what that means is that things like gas cans or Molotovs are now going to take out birds, no problem. Oh, I wanna see the stinger perch and not constantly shoot at me. Oh, that's so different now. It's not like a machine gun anymore. <laughs> Another big thing that they change is about healing. So there's no temporary meds in here, but healing efficiency cards, such as, I don't know, Field Surgeon, right? Field Surgeon is now going to affect pain pills, which it never did before, which is crazy. So just one of these cards can make your pain meds basically heal the entirety of someone on your team. If you're playing like a doc or a mom or something like that. So what we're going to do now is just go through a bunch of the card changes that I feel people are going to be paying attention to the most, okay? So one of the big ones here right away is Energy Drink, and this one now provides 50% stamina, 25% weapon swap speed, 50% move speed while firing, and 10% slow resistance. So this card to me is a new meta card for something like a Marathon Runner deck that uses Admin Reload, because weapon swap speed is great for Admin Reload, move speed while firing is great for Hellfire, slow resistance is just something we haven't had before, and then Stam is always nice to have, especially since Marathon Runner no longer removes your sprint. Energy Drink is awesome now. It's kind of in the same idea of a cross trainers where it touches a bunch of things and it doesn't do anything 
amazing to any particular stat, but it just helps buff everything a little bit. Smelling Salts now provides plus 200% revive speed, which makes something like Rousing Speech absolutely stupid. <laughs> Hyper Focus got a big change. So this one now makes it so your move speed while shooting or melee attacking is slower, which means you don't want to put it into a Laser Beams deck anymore. You don't want to have it in your melee deck anymore because it's going to slow you down a lot. But if you're an ADS player, this is really nice because then you can actually move a little bit rather than just being stuck in the ground like a turret. And to show you what I mean with Hyper Focus lowering your move speed with a Laser Beams deck, I'm walking and now I'm firing. And you see how much slower I get because of Hyper Focus? It's a big debuff. And speaking of ADS cards, things like Tunnel Vision or Steady Aim now got buffs. So if you are aiming down sights every... 0.75 seconds you'll get a weak spot damage increase or you'll get a recoil control increase and steady aim or with patient hunter this is also faster it used to be one second now it's 0.75 so it used to be three seconds to get full stacks now it's only 2.25 seconds which is a pretty significant buff considering a lot of the times when you need to shoot at something you're kind of on a time constraint because it's going to come back and hurt you if you don't pep talk got a huge change pep talk used to be revive speed now what it does and this is actually part of the holly clip i showed you earlier where i was invincible is while you're reviving teammates you take three less damage from all ridden and when you pick a teammate up they are healed for an additional 10 health so <laughs> what you can do with this is you can turn your teammates into little infinite ammo turrets especially if they're running two is one and one is none which is kind of what i was doing again at the beginning of the video so this is a really fun card and the main point of this design is that if there's a wretch on them or if there's chard around you or something is trying to hurt you while you're healing this allows you to revive them without going down simultaneously run like hell got a big change this makes it so that when you take damage your move speed is reduced by 12 percent for three seconds honestly i didn't really notice that happening when I took damage, but maybe it was happening. Again, I wasn't really doing a whole lot of purposeful speed running yesterday, but I didn't really notice this happening when I was using Run Like Hell. Again, big change here in Marathon Runner. You no longer lose your ability to sprint when you are using Marathon Runner. So to me, Marathon Runner is kind of a meta pick right now just because it gives you so much more mobility. Also, I believe Glass Cannon now affects weak spot damage properly, where before it wasn't. So this is going to be really big news on something like an Ogre or a Breaker. Glass Cannon always would give you its full benefits on something like a Mutation, because Mutation weak spots can't be broken. But Ogres, Breakers, that type of thing, it's going to be a really big deal on them, or maybe the Abomination. And we already talked about this in the last video, but a bunch of the move speed cards just got tuned down a little bit. They still provide move speed, but all the numbers are just a little bit lower. So I could go over to each one of them, but Pep in Your Step is another example. Or I went from 10 to 8, and you'll see that as a theme through all the movement speed cards. Like this one was 6, and now it's 4 on the SMG speed. That's, that's just the overall trend. Utility Scavenger did not change. However, Razor Wire is now in the utility slot, which we talked about in the December update. So you need to factor in getting utility upgrades if you want to upgrade your Razor Wire. Which, that reminds me, let's talk about Razor Wire now with the mugger card which it's so fun to have this card when you play melee now because kills with melee weapons now have a three percent chance of spawn ammo which used to be two percent before but <laughs> razor wire can also spawn and it is so fun when you're hitting stuff with a bat you're like oh piece of candy razor wires here <laughs> i love that but again it's going to go into your quick slot now which is nice a lot of the time because that allows you to still hold a grenade while also having razor wire and this opens up a whole new style of play where people are carrying razor wire more often and not just on levels like the diner or t5 so if you trigger a random swarm boom slap some razor wire down and then you're going to be much more equipped to make impromptu holdout areas and on that same trend we have highwayman which does the same exact thing except kills with secondary guns which i think it always has been all secondary guns it was just labeled wrong now i have a chance to spawn ammo it's up to three percent was two and now it's also going to spawn molotovs which is also a lot of fun so <laughs> tagging that up with pyro gives you temporary health pretty much whenever you want I love it. So I like doing this with an ammo stash build where I have infinite ammo with my tech nine. You could do it with a Belgian now and you could do it with any of the pistols. Adrenaline field is very different now. It doesn't provide stamina. It doesn't take away stamina region. It just makes it so when you kill something, you get seven stam over seven seconds. And now it stacks up to five times. It never stacked before. When I was using it, I felt like, <laughs> honestly, you just really got to feel it out. But sometimes I felt like I was getting more stam as a result of this change. Other time I felt like I was running out of stam because of this change. So overall, it doesn't put you in a really creepy corner where if you're out of stam, you're in a lot of trouble, but it, it, it feels like a side grade rather than an upgrade or a downgrade. 
ammo mule no longer takes away your support accessories, so I want to try doing some ammo decks. I think that'd be a lot of fun with something like an AA-12. Especially now that we mentioned it, combat training is here. Combat training now provides plus one bullet stumble damage. So what that means is every single bullet that hits a ridden is going to cause plus one stumble damage because each ridden has stumble HP. We have a whole video about stumble and how it works. Go ahead and check it out on the channel. So this could be really nice on SMGs. It's going to be really nice on shotguns that have pellets. It's going to be extremely nice on something like the AA-12 that has a lot of pellets and a lot of fire rate all at the same time. And what you'll see with a lot of these cards, like the Silver Bullets or Large Cal, is they no longer have their negative attributes, which makes them much more of a fun pick, IMO. By the way, Field Surgeon was fixed. It says minus 50% use speed. It only used to be minus 25%, but it always said minus 50, so watch out. That's going to hurt a lot more than it used to before. Cold Brew Coffee got a big change. It's another one of those things that does a little bit of everything in four different categories, which again, all of these are nice. Use speed, weapon swap speed, aim speed, reload speed. This is just a nice general card now. Needs of the Many only takes off minus 10% health now as opposed to minus 20. So this will help maybe mix up a little bit of things in case you don't want to have a mom on your team. The combat knife got a buff. I haven't really tested it out yet, but apparently has more of a cleave now than it did before. So that might be fun to play with. Group therapy got a big buff. It used to give five health per teammate and now it's eight health per teammate. And again, wooden armor got changed. I got to talk about wooden armor. It no longer has minus 100% explosive resistance. Line them up is no longer just for ARs in case you ever wanted to try this card out. It's another one of those general cards that does a little bit of everything. And a couple more of the big ones here is that safe room recovery got a buff. So if everybody runs this, you get a ton of trauma heal every single level. And we also have quick slot inventory cards, which would be really nice with the new razor wire changes. Now on to experience DMT. The changes to experience DMT are huge and meta changing because experience DMT used to be a meta card. And I would argue it's not anymore. So beforehand, experience DMT would increase the health of a teammate who was healed by a medical accessory by 20%. And their health would be raised by 20% for the remainder of the level. And if there was any trauma that was within that 20%, that trauma would be erased once the level was completed. So experience DMT was one card that did amazing things to maintain the trauma of the entire team. What they did was they changed it almost completely. <laughs> so now, when you use a medical accessory on a teammate, that target gains 10% max health instead of 20. It no longer does that trauma thing. Experience DMT doesn't affect your trauma at all. So if you were hoping it did, too bad, it's gone. And then, instead, it's going to increase your stamina by 10%, and then also your stamina region by 10%. So, in my mind, this falls right out of my dock deck. And it's kind of this fringe use of maybe somebody who is using melee on the team would get a bunch of benefit. But overall, I don't feel like any of these three stats at 10% are that significant. One other big thing, which I honestly have not looked at until this exact moment right now, is play offline. So there's an actual training section now. And then you can also offline campaign and go ahead and get your own progression that way. I haven't done any of this yet, but I probably should try it if I want to go ahead and do some stuff that doesn't involve other people. And, and I think one thing that would be really nice is that if you load in here to an offline thing, I can get progression right now, but I still have my 1000 copper, which I think is something that people were missing. And I go ahead and pick up my stuff and then just go into it. But something I want to show you here is that blighted were fixed because I actually got a blighted roll here. So this will be huge. If I go ahead and I open this up here and I kill these guys next to me, you see how I'm not taking damage? <laughs> Where before that would absolutely destroy me on nightmare mode. So blighted are way easier to deal with now. And really on the topic of being easier to deal with, yeah, take a look at that. We can probably talk about difficulty here a little bit. So the difficulty on nightmare mode is substantially easier. It feels, it feels so much like veteran did beforehand. And part of the reason why it feels so much easier is one because of the burn cards two they just they nerf the damage on the creatures here so if i go up here and i try to actually take damage oh wow i have a bot gym and a bot dock well there's the randomization that they were talking about you don't just get the same characters every time but if i come up here and try to get hit by something like this guy here right i'm taking way less damage than i did before before if you went into nightmare mode creatures did plus 100 damage compared to what they did in veteran mode now it's only 50. Same with mutations. Mutations used to do 75% more damage than they did in veteran mode. Now it's only 35. So just because of that, the whole game feels a lot easier because it's much less punishing on your mistakes. There's a bunch of other things they fixed in terms of spawns and stuff like that. So the game just feels like it doesn't spawn anywhere near as much stuff at you. And like hawkers, if they go ahead and they spit at you, if they miss, they just sit there now for eight seconds rather than going after you again they just sit there like oh okay well i guess i missed now i'm on timeout so they changed a bunch of that type of stuff <laughs> to make it so 
there's just, again, it's much, much less punishing. You don't need to be as precise. You don't need to be as flawless. I can go ahead and be like, blah, 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 blah. And if I mess up, it's not a big deal. And it's much more forgiving, which I think is good for the game overall. Now, as someone who's played a lot of this game and we got really good at Nightmare, we are clearing stuff on old Nightmare, right? It takes a lot of that challenge out, but I think what it does is it introduces new ways to play the game. It introduces new ways to think about it. And I think much more importantly, it makes it so that a lot more people can enjoy the game because what it felt like before was folks just had no chance if they didn't want to dedicate a lot of time into the game, if they didn't want to dedicate a lot of hours. And I think overall, by lowering the difficulty and increasing the accessibility, it increases the chance for more people to become more enthusiastic about the game. Because if you were to beat Veteran and then suddenly Nightmare feels like no man's land, there's no way you could do anything without, you know, cheating or speedrunning, which is what a lot of people resorted to, then they just wouldn't even engage with that higher level of involvement with the game. Where now it can be like, well, I beat Vet and I kind of want to do something a little bit harder. And by taking on things that are a little bit harder, it allows them to really dive deeper into the community and learn more things about the tactics, etc., etc. Where before it just, for too many people, it felt way too hard and they wouldn't even try it because it just felt like a lost cause. So overall, I think it's a really good thing for the whole community. And then there is going to be a new difficulty mode coming for folks like myself who played a lot of Nightmare and really, really liked the punishing aspect of it. And I don't know when that's coming out, but I'm assuming it's going to be sometime in 2022. We stream just about every single night on twitch.tv slash swingpoint if you want to go ahead and check that out. There's other things going on with the December update that we're going to go more in depth with, like some of the new strategies. So if you want to go ahead and see those videos, make sure you're subscribed down below. There's also probably other things I forgot to mention, like the first aid kits in nightmare mode now give you a free heal. They never did that before. And again, a bunch of other things that we'll go more and more in depth to if you want to really get a good feel for it. But with that, thank you guys so much for being here. I hope you enjoy the new update, and I'll see you guys in the next video that we do around here.